Hello. This is the second rambling session for an actual video. So let's get right in. Bitcoin has been, well, dropping. As I've said repeatedly, this is not a surprise and quite frankly, a welcomed correction. While some may not want to have seen it drop this far, myself included, it is nonetheless a consequence of having such a steep, long-running upline. And to be quite honest, I expect it to drop more. In all honesty, I expect it to drop into last year's values. But for now, this is three moving averages, SMA, SSMA, and SMMA, and then my visual script for Range Hunter. First, let's get rid of this, and let's get rid of this. So as you can see, I've just put two here in this module. These aren't really overly bright moving averages, rather simple in all honesty. I chose an odd time frame just to cause the numbers to be messed up. Meaning I want a long term and an unusual sequence. So, 293 minute candles. Same thing here, another weird, altogether out there, crazy time frame. The goal is to look at the market in an unusual way, not the standard way. So, now that we have that one, let's look at this one. Now, this one I'm just using the four hour marker. Nothing special here. So, kind of a little bit of a mixture. And now the range hunter. This will become a modulus uh, component. It is one of the many things I am working on. And this is a 10% boundary. It needs some work because it does have a problem with trading view where when trading view does its yearly reset it magically resets as well that's not really what I want but unfortunately it's a glitch within the way trading view handles historical data so when you put all of these together and you look at the market in both a standard thinking process and an unusual thinking process. You get a situation where you help see some of where the market is going. And it does really work quite well with other coins also. Okay, let's come down to everybody's favorite lately, lately. And you can see it's actually doing pretty healthy. It's hovering around its median and it's fluctuating. But here you can see it had a sharp uptick. That could just be because it's a new coin. We'll see. But this latter part looks like it should. Hovering around the median. 
And this is what a healthy coin should look like. Going up, coming down, bouncing off the median, going up, going below the median, crossing the median. This zigzag pattern is a healthy market. Now let's go look at Ether. It too looks reasonably healthy right now, but it also had, I wouldn't say a rapid uptick historically, but I think it's had a considerably drawn out. So I would say this is a healthy approach because you can see several points where it had corrections. And that's significantly different when you look at Bitcoin. When you look at Bitcoin, you see a very unhealthy coin. And that is extremely problematic. Even though you have a few drops along the way, you still see a very pronounced long duration coin. So I don't consider this a healthy market in general. And it's one of the reasons why I don't directly trade Bitcoin. And I'm going to emphasize, I still think prices could go to last year's values. Which I would say would be either in the red zone here or just below it. See if I can get this. Okay, there we go. So, and as you can see, we already had a couple of times where the price action did dip into this lower boundary. So, realistically, don't be surprised if you see it. And that brings me to my next point that I want to cover risk, particularly risk assessment and trying to determine how much risk is the right amount of risk. This market has woken a lot of people up that didn't really plan as thoroughly as they should. This is a pretty steep drop from the 60,000s down to the 30,000. 50% of the volume of the coin. It's not insurmountable to recover from, but it has certainly left a lot of mayhem in the wake. There are multiple ways of dealing with this situation. But first and foremost, I want to talk about all the white knuckle writing a lot of investors have been doing during this up and down seesaw. If you're getting stressed out over what the market is doing, or you're worried about it blowing your portfolio up, you've overextended yourself. Very simply put, there should be no excitement and no adrenaline rush in trading. It should be as boring, dull, and mundane as putting your clothes on in the morning or brushing your teeth. If it isn't, then you have overextended yourself and taken on too much risk. Even if this sits here for six months, I have one position in Bitcoin Cash that's 46% underwater. My approach is just to continue to put a little more in it here and there until I drop the price down. And when I make a purchase for $11, I'm going to sell $12 worth. In essence, I'm going to cannibalize my position on the basis of my profit. It's a technique that lets me break down the losses I've had 
by averaging in one dollar at a time into new purchases. Now this does have to be done manually, but it's still a very effective technique. And one that over time will let me get rid of the negative position. This is just one of many ways of dealing with this issue. I could also simply just take a loss and go into recovery. But I really don't want to because I haven't really done much with my budget. With the 25% rule, I've only used 25% of my budget. That still leaves 75% of my budget sitting there waiting to be used. As I said, I only have $145 in this position. That's it. I can let it sit there and recover. I can manually trade here and there. And it, or I can just do nothing and leave it alone and see what happens. Completely forget about it and just leave it completely alone and let it sit. It's not money I need to worry about because it never was money I needed to worry about. One of the biggest things I have heard repeatedly throughout this entire crash or correction is how am I going to explain this to my wife? There are so many things wrong with that that I honestly don't even know where to begin with it. Except, point blank, if you have to explain it to your wife or your significant other or whatever phrase you want to use, you've already screwed up as soon as you've taken the money out of your bank account. Point blank. It should have never have left your bank account if it wasn't something you could afford to lose right away. Because the moment it leaves your bank account, you've already lost it. If it comes back to your bank account, yay, yippee, bravo. If it doesn't, oh well. See, the amount of money I personally invested, $300. Well, that's what? $10 a day for 30 days? Go without eating lunch. Skip beer night once a week or pool night or whatever. There's any number of ways of recollecting yourself if it's a complete loss. But you need to do it in a way that your significant other already knows what's going on. Because point blank, if you have to explain you lost to your significant other, your problem isn't your loss. It's much bigger than that. Because that means you've done something that you both aren't on board with in realizing that this is a risk. It may turn out well, like back here. It may not. There is no knowing the future. So right away, if that's the kind of thinking you've had going into trading, sell everything off, take your losses, put what you have back in a bank account, and stay out of trading. That's not the way you make money. That's not the way you manage anything. Because you don't take money to that extent that you have to explain the loss. Because you've done something that's hurt you financially. The money you invest is money gone, period. Bottom line, as soon as it leaves your bank account, it's gone. You might as well have gone into a casino in Las Vegas or Atlantic City and threw it away on a craps table. It's that simple. That is the absolute mindset you have to have in this market. There are no other ways of thinking about this kind of a market. None. This is just not going to happen. Realistically, there are no magic bullets. There's no get-rich-quick schemes. 
even with dollar cost averaging and carefully placing manual trades, there's no way of knowing that this is going to happen or not happen. It could happen at any minute. This could drop completely to zero in the next few hours, and that would be the end of Bitcoin. It would be completely liquidated. And anybody holding any large amounts of money on it would lose everything. It could shoot up to $350,000. For those that wanted to go that high, that's wonderful. They would have one hell of a payday. But the point is, you don't know which direction this is going to go. And trying to play lottery with your investments is always going to guarantee the worst possible outcome. This is mathematics. This is people buying and selling. This is large institutions deliberately trying to push their price down so they can get in at a cheaper price. Because nobody wants to buy at a premium. And when you get $10 million on the table to spend, buying up here is not an option. So this is a game of how low can they push it. And where they have the money to do so, it's going to go very low. Realistically, that is this market. And it can be Bitcoin, it can be ADA, it can be Ether, it doesn't matter. The coins that sit like this, that have this kind of a volume, are automatically going to be target for institutionals. Bottom line, be prepared before you ever get into it. Always, always consider the worst case scenario as common case. And my own personal trading, I was taught by a very wise mentor. You need to think of your market in two simple factors. The first factor, you are always one trade away from bankruptcy. The second factor, you are always one trade away from liquidation. Bankruptcy is poor planning on your part. Liquidation is poor research. On your part. If you go back to the history of the stock market crash in 1929, a lot of people lost everything and a lot of multi-millionaires came out of that market because they were prepared for the worst case scenario. I don't know if we're going into another 1929 global market crash because of hyperinflation or overextended economies or whatever. I'm not a fortune teller. If I was, I would be making fortune. But I do know that no matter what the market is, careful planning is going to be the only way to survive it. Considering your risks, understanding your limits, and knowing that you've lost the money as soon as you've lost as soon as it's left your bank account is going to be the only way to look at any market situation and come out of it on top. Don't be caught by surprise. Don't underestimate the market and don't underestimate the greed of the institutions. The whale watching area of the support server should be a warning to anybody getting into this market. When you see 200, 300, or 400 million dollars moving into a market, you know there's going to be manipulation. When you see that much money moving out of the market, liquidity is going to take a huge hit. Pay attention to these numbers. I know that area makes a lot of noise, but those numbers help you predict and see what your next steps need to be to keep you out of this. Recently, just within one hour, close to $1 billion of money 
went into the Bitcoin market. Think about that. One billion dollars. That is a substantial amount of money in a very short time. Will that bring the next major bull rush that will push it to the magic $350,000 per coin? I don't know. But what I do know is a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money in the process. You don't need to be one of them. Until next time.